Hi, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Realtor Talk with me, Lloyd Rosales Cox. Uh, today, I've got a friend of mine, Warren Phyllis Kirk from Mortgage Finder on the podcast. Thanks for coming on, Warren. You're welcome. Nice to be here. So, yeah, Warren, as I mentioned, he works for Mortgage Finder. Uh, Warren, why don't you introduce yourself to everyone and, and what you do? Sure. Well, I'm a director of, uh, of Mortgage Finder. Uh, we're part of the Property Finder group. Um, I've been in the industry here 15 years, one of the first uh, mortgage consultants in the UAE. Um, we work as a company with all the banks in the market to provide impartial advice to our clients and guide them through the whole process from initial review through every step of the transaction through to completion, um, ensuring that their, their interests are maintained and uh, the whole process runs smoothly. Okay, yeah. So, so you briefly touched on, you know, what your what your role as a mortgage broker is. Uh, why should someone use a mortgage broker rather than saying going to their own bank or doing their own research? Sure. Well, I mean, there's around 22 different lenders in the UAE, um, and obviously, buying a property and securing a mortgage for it is a huge financial commitment. So. Getting uh, the right advice and checking all the options out is vitally important. But to do that as an individual with no prior knowledge, it's, it's super difficult. You know, the banks um, don't always publish what they, or they offer or it can be quite misleading in terms of the way, the way they portray their rates and products. So having somebody impartially uh, independent from the bank to guide you with your best interests at heart is, is pivotal in, in making this decision. Whereas a bank, even if it's the bank that you, you use regularly, they will only have one product suite to, to sell you basically. And that's what, that's what they do. They sell you their product. They're not there to advise you. They're there to sell you what they have. Whereas we are there to advise you and guide you through the good and the bad and every step of the way to make sure your interests are protected. Great, yeah. So it's a, it's a great thing to to use someone who gives you advisory rather than someone who's looking to just push you towards the products that they have for their company. Um, I obviously know, but for people who may be new to to home buying, to investing in property, what's the what's the difference between a mortgage broker like yourself and a mortgage lender? Okay, well, I'm sort of touching on back on the previous comment. We're independent. We are not an employee of the bank or the mortgage lender. Um, we are a consultant working on behalf of the client, whereas a mortgage lender or bank is they're a provider of that, that product, basically. So they'll provide the mortgage and the facility and the mechanics of how all that works, um, but they're not giving you advice. They are there to sell you what they have. Okay. And so for anyone who's you know, looking to, to get a mortgage, looking to invest in, in a first home especially, what are the kind of charges involved and what are the requirements they need in terms of documentation to, to use a mortgage broker like yourself and your services? Well, initially we would do just um, a, a free review. There's no charge to that. We would speak to the clients, get a better understanding of what their budget is, what their what their income is, um, and any existing outgoings, and then we'll balance all that and prepare um, a report with the maybe the top three, top four, as many as a client wants, top five options if you want, um, of, the, of the banks in the market. And then we'll sit and study those together to make sure that it's the right, the right thing for the client. In terms of the charges, um, mortgage brokers will charge a small fee. It could be two and a half to 5,000 dirhams, depending on the situation. Um, but it's generally split 50% on pre-approval, 50% on final closure of the transaction. So they should be with you right the way through the whole course of the, of the, of the operation. From a bank's charging perspective, banks will charge anything from a zero arrangement fee to a 1% arrangement fee, depending on the type of, of transaction. Um, they make their profit in the annual interest that they, they charge, really. Um, the fees that they charge for establishment is more to cover the costs of, the, of, the, of that the establishment rather than the lending of the funds. Okay. And for, for anyone who's looking to, to obtain the mortgage, obviously you said about them having the consultation with yourself and looking at the top options based on their, their circumstance. What are the basic documents that they should have prepared uh, in order to, to do that and get uh, the application going with a bank? 
for the initial review, we can just do that verbally. You know, we don't, because they, they would fill in a fact find information that would give me all the parameters that we want to know. If they then to get, want to go ahead, we would then ask for a certain document if somebody's salaried. Um, we would want, obviously, their ID documents, um, Emirates um, ID, six months bank statements, uh, a letter from the company confirming their employment and how long they've been with the company and their salary, etc. Any allowances, whether fixed or variable. Um, and if they have any other existing finance agreements, like other mortgages, car loans, we may require documents to to quantify them, but not so much now because a lot of this information is available on the Etihad credit system that the banks will, mm -hmm. will do a review on anyway. So that's in generic. Now, if somebody's self-employed, it's a lot more uh, in depth what the banks require. Um, generally, they'll want to see 12 month statements, possibly personal as well as, as business. Um, they can ask for two, three years audited financials. They'll want all the company formation documents. Uh, and get a better, and certainly in the current climate, they want to really have a clear understanding of what the business does, who the, who the customers are, to do a full KYC of, of the situation. Okay, that's fairly informative, uh, Warren. Um, something that's you know, confusing for people who have never got a mortgage before, and it's something that you're never really taught in, in school or as you're growing up until the first time that you need to get, get a mortgage, um, can you explain to people what are the different types of mortgages that you can get here in Dubai and what are the kind of pros and cons of each of those types of mortgages? Okay, well, I think the main thing people is initially will concern themselves with is what type of interest rates or what type of profit rates they're going to get to, um, to choose. Now, in the, in the last sort of 15 years um, I've been in the industry here, fixed rates have been the preference because... Rates have gone up and down quite somewhat, um, generally between sort of 3.99 and, and 4.5 has, has been the rate range in general. Um, so people would generally, rather than taking a risk of taking a variable rate, which can change on a, on a monthly basis, they would choose a fixed rate. So they're secure for maybe two, three, even up to five years before they have to go back and speak to the bank again, renegotiate for a for new, new offer, basically. However, in the current climate where interest rates are super low, historically the record, le record low here, um, we're now seeing clients that are choosing variable rates that could be you know, 1% lower because they feel confident in the current market condition that rates aren't going to go up that much in the next few years. So they're confident in taking advantage of that lower rate period. Um, so in terms of the initial choices, is the rate you're looking for. Um, the, the term of the loan, if you're salary, banks will end up to 65. If you're self-employed, banks will end up to 70. Um, so clients will generally use the maximum term they can get because then their contractual obligation is the minimum it can be. But all of the banks will allow overpayments, maybe 15, 20, even 30% a year, free of charge. So we would advise clients to still take the maximum loan term contractually even if your intention is to pay it off much sooner because your committed obligation is is, is much smaller and if you still want to pay it off in half the time you, you can do it generally um, so that would be our advice um, in terms of the the structure of the way the, the mortgages at work it's the same as the structure as it would be the world over which would be interest or profit rates applied to the amount that you're borrowed amortized over the period of, of the loan basically so the monthly payment you make is split between capital repayment and and interest or profit rate and then over the term when the the interest profit rate is higher at the beginning of the loan but lower at the end of the loan as you repay the capital basically and that's it that's it really there's there's no um, major differences for the uae to uh, to other places Okay, that's really informative and, and definitely useful for anyone who's, who's looking at a mortgage for, for the very first time who's not sure about how they work. Um, can you also explain to those who don't know what the, the LTV is and, and what the current ratios are for, for the different circumstances and for different people? Well, LTV stands for loan to value, basically. So the central bank uh, governs how the banks operate in, in terms of lending to, to clients. Now, 
currently they've just increased it. So if it's your first property that you're buying in Dubai or the UAE and it's below the 5 billion sector, they will allow you to borrow 80% of the, of the property price. If it's above 5 million, they will allow you to lend 70% of the property price. Any subsequent properties, regardless of whether it's above or below 5 million, is 60% basically. Um, now, there are also some banks that will lend um, 80% of the actual contract, the, 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 um, the, the, the conversion fees, so it could be the real estate fees, the DLD fees, they'll lend 80% of them and add them to the loan also. So you effectively you're getting just over 85% lending currently, which is the highest it's been for probably 12, 13 years I've been here. So it's good for buyers because it minimizes the amount they need to, to do the deal basically. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, uh, historical lows, as you as you mentioned before, and it's a great time to to be able to to leverage your money at this time. Um, in terms of uh, off plan properties and for for locals, what what's the difference as well for the for the LTV? Okay, well, with, in lo with locals, it's generally five percent more. That's it. That's the rule. So whether it's below five million or above five million, it's an extra five percent that the central bank allows. Um, for off plan, 50% is the maximum um, banks will finance prior to handover. Um, so, but what we're seeing the phenomena over the last few years is a lot of the payment plans have been 20, 30, 70 on handover. So, finance doesn't actually even kick in until handover. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's only very sort of dated. Um, contracts now that would have a payment plan generally that runs right the way through up to being 100% paid at completion. Most will be, the majority of the balance will be on completion and more than 50%. So the banks would only um, come in at that stage. So all people can do really now, um, apart from one or two different um, anomalies, is get a pre-approval to make sure that they know they can get finance when it comes to handover. But that's obviously subject to your position not changing between now and, and handover also. So there's a little bit of a risk of a client doing that if they need finance. Sure, yeah, you're, you're mentioning about pre-approvals and obviously knowing what, what you're getting into for the future. Why is it so important for, for a client to look at getting a pre-approval before searching for properties? Well, I think in the current climate, um, nothing is, is you know, super clear as it, as it was before in terms of assuming you could get finance. Um, all the banks have different credit policies. All the banks look at different industry sectors in different ways. Some um, could be more risk adverse to one sector than another. So assuming you can get finance is, is a bit of a risk. Um, to get a pre-approval, it, it takes five days, basically, generally, if you're a salaried client, um, 10 if you're self-employed, maybe. But getting that and securing that first before you start looking in earnest at property gives you the security that you know you're ready when you find one. Um, and when you do find one, you know, it's a buyer's market at the moment, so you will, no doubt, be putting in a, 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 you know, a, a good offer. And if you can't move quickly, you may lose that deal because the seller will want to see proof that you're in a position to move. So getting the pre-approval is really essential um, to the whole process and advisable. So you know what you're doing, but also if you find something, you can move very quickly and secure the deal. Definitely. And I think it's from, from a broker's perspective, you need to also know what the client's budget is because we, we do get that uh, thing where people are looking at a certain range and then you know, when they find a property, when they go to get the mortgage afterwards, they find either that they, they can't uh, borrow as much as they expected, or sometimes they can borrow more than expected and then they have to go through a whole new search uh, because they're able to afford more, afford more than what they could do. Exactly. I mean, um, you, you, I mean, you don't want to spend time with the client showing them properties that may be outside of their budget. But also, a lot of clients don't know how much they can borrow. Um, they, they don't know about the loan to values. They don't know about the extra 5%. They don't know about the, the banks that you can add fees that can increase their budgets. So it's just, um, it's, a, it's pivotal to do that first um, before you start looking. So you know exactly what the parameters are and it helps both buyer and agents also.
Yeah, we, we have a lot of clients who use, you know, the mortgage calculators and those kind of things, but it's still better, I think, to get the, the pre-approval. With those, you know, those mortgage calculators that you can find online, how, how accurate kind of are they? Well, they're just going to give you a cost per month of the loan that you're looking to borrow. It doesn't really give you an accurate assessment of somebody looking at your personal situation. And every bank looks at your personal situation differently. They have broad parameters that the central bank give them, but they all look at it differently. They all treat credit cards differently. They all treat lots of different factors differently. So making an assumption, you can get finances a bit of a risk, even in very, what would be perceived stable situations. For, the, for spending the time prior, it's just not worth it. And a lot of the banks um, are being more strict than others. So um, rather than going into like naming specific banks, but they, you know, there's some very big obvious banks aren't really keen to, for open for business at the moment, where others are happy to. So it, you can waste time on that as well. So um, it's not obvious in public knowledge. Um, so it's good to take advice do a review, know exactly what you can do, what you can afford, all the costs before you set out. Exactly. And it's worth paying the, the mortgage broker fee that we were talking before because it's going to save you money in the long run by, by doing so, that. I mean, the initial review we do, there's no fee. So yeah. to, for, for us to assess your situation, present the options to you, which will allow you to say, we, we were given a, our opinion that yes, you should be good for finance. Um, and here's all the costs involved. There is no fee for that. So that's, it is a free of charge service. Um, the client should at least do that, even if they're not keen on doing an, um, a pre-approval because they might not be 100% decide whether they're buying or not, at least speak to us or another broker to do an assessment. Definitely. Definitely on that. Um, I know that we have obviously you know, the, the variable and fixed rate interest that you were talking about before in terms of product. Do you think there's any uh, products that we see in other markets, for example, like the UK, uh, there's a gap for, for products that aren't here in Dubai? And if so, what are they? I think what we're seeing now, I mean, in the UK, you can have interest only products which are very popular because it's very commonplace that people will have a mortgage from the, you know, the mid 20s right the way through retirement age. But at retirement age, they would sell that larger property that they may have had when they've had children and they needed that bigger space and they'll just simply sell it and move to a smaller property. So they're not worried about paying off the loan because um, interest rates are generally much lower um, and they'll do an interest only product which would minimise their monthly cost. Um, here we don't see that as much, though there are interest introductory, interest only introductory products available um, which have just come into play recently. Um, and they're quite popular because you have a lot of expense when you come into buying the property. So to have a bit of respite and put some more money back into your, your bank account over the first 12 or 24 months by having an interest only mortgage payment as opposed to a capital and interest is uh, attractive to some people. Um, I think what we'd like to see, I think and would help the market here is um, more longer term mortgages would would assist you know we see 30 years 35 year mortgages in other countries which would recoup, reduce the cost of borrowing so that could help people get into the into the purchase chain could have, could allow them to afford more to buy a, a, a bit of a higher grade property that they want would like to see that and i think that that will come in soon um, because we've seen a relaxation from the central bank in terms of saying to banks it's up to you what age you want to lend to, it's, it's your, it's, you can do it at your discretion, where before they capped it at 65 for salary and 70 for self-employment. But we're not seeing too much of a take up with the banks on that at the moment, because it kind of conflicts with employment law, which says you know, you've got to retire at 65. So there's a bit of a conflict of interest. I'm sure that will get tidied up between the governmental departments over the next 12 months. And in that point of view, longer mortgages means cheaper payments, it helps the market. So all these are positive, simple factors that um, I envisage which will, will, will come in. Um, so there's, there's, there's certain improvements the UAE mortgage market can, can take. I think the, one of the biggest things would be the banks are, are very cautious here. You know, they're very high, they, they look at the asset, but they're really, really cautious on the income side of things. So, and the reason behind that is the recovery of a property does take, you know, 
pretty much one and a half, two years if something goes wrong and somebody can't pay. So the banks are very reluctant to get involved with all of the bureaucracy and trouble of that situation, um, even though they've got a secure asset. Whereas in other countries where if somebody breaches the contract, you know, three, four months, the, the bank will re recover the asset, sell it, and they get the money back. Now, not that we want to see that, but if that was implemented here in a more liberal way, banks would lend more strongly and quickly, and that in turn helps the market and, and everything else. So um, that would be a very, very positive step if we saw that streamlined process, because it would just help with the market considerably. 100%. Yeah, and I think those are good suggestions. I'm, I'm sure that's going to come into the future, uh, come in the future as the, the market becomes more mature as well. Um, and yeah, all these other different types of project uh, products will, will start appearing and it will give uh, lenders more options and uh, more creative ways to, to structure Absolutely. them. There's lots of different, there's lots of different things that can, that can change the extended term, interest only for the full term. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's many different factors. I mean, at the moment, there isn't really a true buy-to-let product, which is very commonplace in other com in countries, whereby the bank will lend on forecast rent. There's one or two, but it, it's very convoluted at the moment. Now, that would be a huge push to the market because the banks would be looking at the property's potential earn income earning, not the individual's. Mm -hmm. And that would be a big boost for people who might be up to their limits in terms of what they want to do with their own personally, but they still would like to buy you know, an investment property. Yes. It's a great way to, to, to save for the future and, you know, um, and create a, 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 a platform to, to support you later on in life. So they, that would be very beneficial as well if there was something like that came Definitely. Okay, thanks, thanks Warren. I'm going to um, do a segment that we usually do here. It's a top five. So I usually ask my guests uh, a top five based on the kind of industry that they're in or something related to what they do. So obviously, since you're working as a mortgage broker, I wanted to ask you, what are the, the top five pitfalls that you see with clients um, when, you, when they're looking to get a mortgage? Okay, I would say, um, one, don't assume your own bank is going to give you the best deal because it's not even nine out of ten that it won't be it will be 19 out of 20 that it won't be the right bank for you um, so don't just do don't be lazy don't just choose your own bank um, look at all the options in the market via a broker um, they will if it's a good broker they will give you a good platform of information maybe not necessarily naming individual banks until you commit but they will give you a wide um, presentation of the options available so you can know what the market rates are what the fees are what all the intricacies of maybe the insurances are do your do your research um, think about what you want out of the mortgage as well um, you know do you need a, a low repayment in the initial two or two or three years that's you know that's very helpful for some people it is available ask the question um, if you're um, a business a business owner then there's options in the market where you can have offset products that could really benefit you by offsetting some of your business revenue to have in your personal accounts meaning you pay less interest on your personal mortgage making your money work for you better as well so there's there's a uh, there's lots of different permutations the biggest one is just you know look into it don't just do the easy option and go to your bank because that's what they want you to um they rely on people being lazy, basically, but it's the biggest financial commitment that you're ever going to make. Do the homework, speak to a broker, they do the homework for you, um, and you'll find it very beneficial, I'm sure. Thanks for that, Warren. Yeah, use an expert, basically. You would you'd do the same if you're looking for a lawyer, for a consultant, all of these things. Use, it, use an expert. Exactly. Uh, I think I think banks make a lot of money actually from well they they get you at a young age don't they or when you first move to Dubai and they rely on many people just do everything with them they do their their investments their mortgage all of that stuff but you should not Definitely. they rely on people being complacent basically yeah you know, I don't want, I can't be bothered getting my bank statements and going and showing them to another bank they they and that's where they win they win, where they win um, you know, the, the difference between the lowest rate in the market to the highest could be 25%. Mm -hmm. So do you really want to be paying 25% more than you need to? Um, no, not, not really at all. So it's, it's a huge amount you can lose out on over the years. 
hundred percent, hundred percent. So yeah, we were talking about interest rates earlier, and they're at historically low levels. Why is why is now? Why would you say now is such a good time to invest in property here in Dubai? I think we're seeing. I mean, I've been here fifteen years, and we're seeing property price levels now pretty much back to those levels in in some cases. So um, it's fantastic value for money compared to I know when I compare prices in Dubai to where I'm from in the UK. I'm thinking, okay, I mean, you know, I'm in a small northern area of the UK, and I'm going, okay, well, the, the value for money here now is is really good. A brand new property, golf course views, really nice. You know, uh, amenities. You know, and this pl- and the property is the same price I would get in a small northern borough in in the UK. So for me, great. You know, great value. And if you look at the global price index of properties, Dubai and the UAE is is pretty much down at the bottom now, um, within the top three, I would say. So from a price point and value, we're getting to some really strong stages now. Um, if you're going to be here for you know five plus years. And you can do the math on this, it makes common sense to buy. Um, you will, even if prices don't go up, they stay the same, or even, even if they to go you know, down a bit before they went back up again, um, you will save more money than renting. Um, so there are strong fundamentals to promote buying at the moment. Um, and you know, Dubai, the UAE is robust. I think they're going to come out of this corona situation very strongly, they've dealt with it very strongly. Uh, we've had a huge uh, number of international inquiries over the last two months. Um, I think it, there's been very positive press reviews of the UAE and how they dealt with things. So it's been quite interesting. It's going to be inter- quite interesting how the rest of the year pans out with overseas buyers coming in. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the the travel restrictions being being eased myself. And we've been speaking to international clients ourselves who are desperate to come over here. Um, once those travel restrictions are eased, I can see a, a big amount of transactions happening when, when people are allowed back into, into the country. Anyway, thanks for being a, a great guest, Warren. Very informative, yeah, very you. insightful, and uh, very uh, educational to people who, who don't know so much about mortgages. It's, it's great to give them that value and that, that um, information about how it all works. Um, if you want to share with uh, how people can get in touch with you, if you have any social media channels that people can, can follow you on, feel free to, to mention them. Well, just come through to, to mortgagefinder.ie. Um, and myself and one of the team will, or one of the team will assist you with all your inquiry details and manage the whole thing for you. Um, and that's it, really. We'll look after you. Okay, I'll put the details for that in the dis- description box below if you're watching this on, on YouTube. And otherwise, thanks for coming on, Warren. You're welcome. Thank you. And please tune in to another episode of Realtor Talks uh, when I next release one. Thanks for watching. Take care.